my name is Brian Moody. I am a retired marine engineer uh, and I'll just talk about my hobby I've had for the last uh, 52 years. I started collecting soldiers when I found a friend. He let me see some old plastic airfix figures uh, and this got me collecting plastic airfix figures for a number of years. Then I found out about uh, wargaming from another friend and uh, started to, to collect and build different armies. And I started off with American Civil War and my friend and I decided to change to historical wargaming, which we've got on the table at the moment, and actually refight actual battles from history instead of made up battles. We started was uh, to refight the Battle of Gettysburg we then uh, turned our attention to uh, Napoleonics and uh, thought it was a good idea to refight the Battle of Waterloo. And uh, for the last few years we've been painting the figures to build the complete French and Hanoverian armies for Waterloo. The purpose of our Wargaming Museum is to let some of our guests uh, see how uh, f fight the, the, the various battles from history. What we do usually is, after we set the, the, the battle up, uh, we fight the both sides the way it was historically, and then wind it back and bring in what ifs. Uh, for example, the Waterloo, one of the reasons the French were defeated was they, they didn't start uh, attacking the Hanoverian line till about one o'clock in the afternoon to allow the ground to dry out from the heavy rain the day before. So one of our things we do is uh, we have what if scenarios, what if the day before was, was dry and the French started attacking first thing in the morning. We've tried this and we, we found the, the French actually defeat the Hanoverian and push them off the ridge that they were on. And this gives them enough time to turn their attention to the Prussians that came on the battlefield about five o'clock in the afternoon. This method, the what if scenario is you can change history and uh, the French actually win the Battle of Waterloo. And uh, you think to yourself, what happened, would happen to Europe after that if the French had won Waterloo? So it's a, an interesting scenario. The museum they usually have about two to four guests at a time. They usually play about four hours and uh, we do various scenarios of the battlefields uh, and the, the, the periods we fight and uh, after a brief explanation of the rules we get split them, them up and two of the guests fighting one side and two of the guests fighting the other. The main aspect for me in uh, recreating the the various battles from history is the the collecting and uh, painting of the figures researching the uniforms and painting the figures to the correct uniform with the the correct facing colors building the regiments up to their exact uh, numerical number that they were on the day uh, using a scale usually one figure representing 20 men, one field gun representing two actual pieces, and uh, being able to build the whole army up. This is the main, my main interest and which keeps me going. The hobby is very expensive. The figures we buy are unpainted and uh, they cost about one pound thirty a figure. That's for about that's for a twenty-eight millimeter high figure. So they're moulded in white metal, uh, mainly mainly tin or pewter. Uh, this is what makes them so expensive. Um, when they arrive, the first job is usually to clean off all the flash from the moulding process and uh, give them a, an undercoat. Uh, this is depending on your preference. I use a white matte flat undercoat. Other people use black. You usually have a, a method of painting the figure. I start off usually with a, a flesh colour to kind of bring them to light, life, uh, the figure initially, and then painting the large areas 
like my coat, trousers, and then uh, going into the finer detail after that. The number of figures I've got in my collection at the moment, I've never actually counted them all. We did a, a rough estimate for insurance purposes. I think it was about five and a half, six thousand painted figures. And then unpainted figures, there's probably another five or six thousand figures uh, waiting in the sidelines to be painted uh, if I ever get around to doing them all. So I've, I've got plenty of figures in store to keep me going for another quite a few years. The length of time to paint a figure, uh, I don't paint one individual figure uh, on its own. I usually paint maybe 10, 15 figures at the same time, putting on the individual colours on each figure and then going back to the, the first figure and uh, putting a different colour on and moving through that way. But uh, I suppose if uh, painting one figure from beginning to end would probably take 30 minutes, something like that. It's more economical time-wise to paint 10, 15 figures at a time. You've got the one colour on your brush, you don't need to wash the, the brush and uh, put a different colour on. You... If you'd like to try uh, wargaming, we're located in uh, Dundee, Scotland, just a few minutes from the centre of the, of the city. The, the name of the place is uh, it's based in our bed and breakfast, Dublin 152 in Dundee and uh, the Wargaming Museum is in uh, one of the front rooms of the house. Thank you for watching this uh, short video and uh, I hope to see you sometime in the future. If you're coming past Dundee, drop in and stay for a, a night or two in our bed and breakfast and uh, we can let you see the museum and uh, if you want to have a go at uh, playing war games, we can take it from there. I hope to see you in the future. Thank you for watching.